In this video, we'll take a look at DreamShip cameras, the Atom 1, Atom 1 4K, Atom 1 Mini Zoom, and Atom 1 Mini. The SSM 500, the last camera is also here, but we are not going to uh, work on it in this video. But the other cameras are connected to my RCP Pro and RCP Mini, which is out in 2024. And uh, these goodies are over here on the side. So those are the ones we'll focus on. And a little later in this uh, video, I will show you how it's all connected, how I made the setup, because it's actually really easy, but there are some details that I wanna share with you as well. But let's get right to shading the cameras. So on the RCP Pro, we have a camera selector hitting under the shift key. So if you press the shift button down, then you'll see we have these unlabeled buttons up here that will basically change between cameras. And the labels are nicely shown right there. The cool thing about those labels is that they come straight out of the camera selector. You, you just enter them into this uh, name field right here. So it is, it is quite easy to update them on the RCP. All right, so this would be the SSM 500. Notice that it has iris control here. So it will, uh, I'm just setting the iris to, to 3.7 and then we can move on to another camera. You'll see that for this camera, which is the Atom 1, it doesn't have a lens we can actually uh, shade with the joystick, so it's not set. Here we have Atom 1 4K, it has lens gears. And with those lens gears, we are able to uh, change the iris and focus off the lens. So yes, here we actually do have lens control. And um, so the first time I move the joystick, you see it's jumping. But now I'll show you something really, really cool, because as soon as you have moved the joystick once for every camera, when you go back to the first one, you'll see that it's picking up at 3.7. So as I'm now moving, changing the lens, it, it will <coughs> bridge the gap from here up to full, um, basically from that point. And the same is true here. So if I now move this one, you see it starts from eight. So even though you have a fixed position joystick on the Skyhoy RCPs, we have a so-called discontinuity strategy that will allow you different ways. And in this case, the one called double linear that will bridge the gap to either end linearly with the value. So you see no jump in the iris. So that's a really cool feature. And uh, we move on. We have over here the Atom 1 Mini Zoom. It also has lens control. First time I move, you'll see that it's jumping. But as soon as I've moved it just once, I could go back to this one and it's going to pick up from where I left it. All right. And then finally, we have the Atom 1 Mini. It doesn't have anything going on here. If you look at the web UI, you see that apart from the cameras that we are apparently connected to, I also have RCP Mini Pro right here. There's an uh, uh, two cameras added and now it starts to make sense. Why would we have a list of devices and why would there for every panel over here be different amounts of cameras? Well, for once, because I want the RCP Mini to shade different cameras than the RCP Pro. They are not likely to sit next to each other in an OB truck. They might be different locations. And by the way, this is a video, so I'm also setting this up to show you opportunities. The RCP Mini, by the way, is special in that it is two thirds of the width of the RCP Pro on purpose, because some of you guys want to squeeze in six RCPs where you could otherwise only fit four, and that's what the RCP Mini is for. And it's also, in a sense, a little simpler in what it shows you. So some operators will prefer to have the simplicity, but you still have the awesome, awesome, awesome Skyway joystick with the displays on top. And now I want to show you what those displays can do, because if I change over to a camera like the Atom 1 Mini 4K, or Atom 1 4K, then I see in this joystick I have Iris, and I also have my pedestal just next to here. Now notice one thing, let's, let's just pick this one up over here. So the Atom, uh, th that was this one. So you see, we're actually adjusting the same iris value on this joystick and the pedestal is also shown over here. Yes, because Dream Chip cameras, they won't accept multi-master scenarios. You can't talk to the camera from multiple devices except if you do it with Skyhoy products, because we have one connection and one connection to the camera is now shared between multiple devices, including the XC8, by the way. I'll get back to the setup in a moment, but uh, no problem. We are solving that issue by having a single connection shared between many master controllers, and they are obviously able to exchange information between each other. So that's really nice. Let's get to some shading because one of the, I mean, on an RCP Pro, you basically dial through these menus. So you see, this is a home menu and you have gain, LUT enable, you have uh, auto exposure correction, you have exposure settings you can set here on your cameras and so on. If you move on to exposure, then you have a uh, black, red, green and blue. You have gamma, red, green and blue up here, which uh, if you in disable the 
auto white balance, then of course you can change these values. So this is how an RCP work. And if you go between the different cameras, you'll see that these values are of course also changing. By the way, here we had a shift function because there's so much stuff inside the dream chip cameras that we actually enabled shift for many of these menu items like exposure. So that would be a second level of things in this case, offset and so on. Now, um, yeah, so basically you can go between cameras and do this shading. But one thing that I know Dreamchip is really proud of is the multi-matrix and the way this works. So multi-matrix is, and now let me see, we had the uh, 4K, yes. So um, with this one, if you enable this one, you have like a, a bunch of vectors. And I think uh, right now you have 24 vectors. So that's like angles in a color circle. And now we can choose between these angles by, by turning this encoding up here. But let's just go to the red one because we have this beautiful Tesla Roadster in the picture. And oh, I think I have really messed that picture up for a moment. Let me just see if we can get back to some more standardized white balance. Thank you. All right. Now let's move on over to the matrix here because now that I'm picking red and it is enabled, notice the color of the Tesla. You see, I'm basically able to almost remove this color or I can exaggerate it quite a lot. And this is a cool thing about the multi-matrix that is you pick that color damage, you know, color vector in your uh, color circle and then you can uh, adjust the, um, you can also adjust the hue. I could actually make it into a blue Tesla if I want. So I think I can uh, turn the, the hue segment around here. And um, can I make it fully blue? I need to go in the other direction. My Tesla is blue, so I want to have a blue Tesla. Almost. All right. So probably not the ordinary thing to do, but this is a pretty cool thing, isn't it? So found in Dream Chip cameras, we can move on to another one. We can do exactly the same, enable multi-matrix. We can also shade basically the color in and out of this one. Now, in this case, we can see the color of the, uh, what is this one, the mini zoom. Uh, we go back to the home page, and I think we'll just give it some more ISO here. Uh, by the way, in this case, yes, yeah, before we gain the uh, camera, we should probably use the iris of it. <laughs> so let's just change that uh, ISO speed just a slight bit. This is uh, like that. I'm sorry, this is out of focus, not my intention. And by the way, so, okay, so that is like shading and you can do that for every DreamChip camera. They pretty much have the same settings, each one of them, and they are found in the same menus. So over on the RCP Mini, you see the menu is, uh, uh, navig you navigate the menu in the same way, but, but because we have uh, only six encoders and this configuration is made for an, a configuration with four encoders, then you see the, it is like a limited selection of things that you find in here. And by the time this one is out, it is likely to have specific configurations that will give you direct uh, you know, access with six, all six encoders in more cases than what is currently the case. But uh, so multi-matrix is, is not found on these pages. I wonder if they are here. No, they are not. We have filter, we have knee, we have um, something called post, white balance and miscellaneous. And uh, I don't know if we have a shift function on that one. It doesn't seem like it. So the RCP Mini is also I um, thought as a device that would give you a simpler user experience in many cases. Um, so having a menu here with uh, like up to uh, 10 pages, six encoders. And uh, if you press the shift key down, you uh, have a camera selector and that camera selector allows me, of course, to go between these um, cameras that I have added inside my configuration UI. And uh, that is the point of uh, these two being different. There is also a um, preset function here, which can be used to, uh, and, and that's actually also found over on the RCP Pro. Um, these are color presets that can store and recall colors of your cameras. Okay, guys, so that is the um, the difference between the RCP Pro and RCP Mini, how you can um, operate the lenses with the, the fancy joysticks here. We have this continuity strategy. We have multi-matrix of the Dream Chip cameras and everything. And now I want to show you how this is all connected. Um, these are the cameras that we are talking about. And the if we just take the, the first one here, this is the um, SM1 Mini, and it is connected using a standard Dream Chip cable to power and then over here to a serial converter all right this is called WaveShare, and it could be uh, other brands but we like this one very very uh, simple straightforward device it has power coming in here ethernet and here rs485 going into the standard dream chip cable so uh atom one mini zoom atom one 4k both of these, they have a cable that includes power and signal going straight into another wave share converter. 
in this case I'm doing something um, pretty funky. I'm basically powering both cameras from the uh, same 12 volt power supply and I'm also feeding them the same. So the reason why this would work because they are basically sharing a data connection is that I have set the RS485 address of this one to two and over here we have the Atom 1 camera which is connected to uh, this converter here and that is on an IP address you see on the side and um, that's a single camera going to this connector while here we have two cameras going into that connector and that's actually possible it's just different workflows that I'm showing you here the normal thing to do would be this one where you have one camera to one converter but it is possible to have two into one converter right there all right over here we had the XC8 and the RCPs um, Pro and Mini and um, the XC8 is actually the brain of this whole operation so that's what we'll be taking a look at now. I feel like we should just try to recreate this configuration basically so what I suggest we do is to create a new project. We will just do this over again. Video recording for Dreamship, all right? And save, yes, and so on. So none of this requires you to be online. It is um, basically done on the web UI of the X8. This is the uh, web address of the X8. And um, um, the first thing we'll do is basically add some cameras. So uh, we cannot auto discover these cameras, but if we search Atom, then um, you find these uh, Dreamship cameras here. So the first one I want to select would be the Atom 1 SSM 500 because the device ID number one is kind of special for the configuration on the XC8. But the uh, important thing is since the Atom 1, sorry, the SSM 500 camera is connected using the WebSocket inside, it has an IP plug in the backside of it. I just need to type in its IP address and I'm good to go. I just press save and now we are basically ready here. You can see it's now connected. I can press this button to start playing the buffer. The buffer is playing, another buffer is playing. If I press over here, I can hold down the, the T band. I can adjust playing speed. I can also shuttle the uh, clip forth and back and move with frames. I can play it and I can stop it and I can do everything I want basically on the X8. Okay, that's for a different video. Let's add another device. So the next one would be my Atom 1 camera over here and uh, what I need to do for this one is to use the TCP serial. It was connected to this um, device that had this IP address and um, the port is, I know it's 5000. These are things you need to know. I also know the camera has bus ID number one so I can just leave those, those uh, fields blank and we'll connect to the camera. All right, um, the next device I wanna add would be uh, the next one in line, which is another Atom 1, but it's the 4K version. So I'll just quickly write that in. See, device IDs are automatically uh, increased for every camera I add, so that's all fine. TCP serial, and the device IDs are how we are addressing the cameras from the devices, basically, uh, using device ID to, um, yeah, to address them. So this one I know is on this serial converter, which is also on port 5000, so I don't need to do anything on that field. But in this case, I know because this is where we have two devices on that same IP address, and I know this device has bus ID too, so I need to type in two for this one and it will connect to it. The next one that I want to set up would be the Atom 1 Mini Zoom. Ooh, something is flashy here in the background. Ah, okay, now it's not flashy anymore. So SM1 Mini Zoom and this one TCP serial has the same converter as the other one, but in this case I know it's bus ID number one, so I can just leave it like that. And we are connected to that one as well. Let's just then the final one would be the Atom One Mini. And with this one, it's TCP serial again. And then it is 49. Yes. Now in this case. For whatever reason, the port number was 26. I think it's the default in the converter. And oh, wait, 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 wait. I think this one also had bus ID too. All right. So you see it was actually disconnected, not connecting to the device, but now it is. Okay, so you need to really keep your mind straight on all these things. All cameras, we, we are now connected to them. So that's really uh, super great. Uh, if you want to test, I think you can test these cameras by pressing the test button. Let's just try that. And then let's see what happens. I think it's flipping the image around. Okay, so I have connection to that one. Super great. Now, what about this one? Um, okay, that's also working. Nice. And uh, let's try this guy. 
So, also. Okay, so it says connected, but I'm also seeing changes. So that's a really good sign, right? That's that's nice. Okay, so <clears throat> next thing, adding panels. So um, RCP Pro and RCP Mini, they could, of course, th there are different ways you can do it. But the easiest way to manage would be like what we're doing now, letting the XC8 being the host, and then the RCP would just be a uh, guest panel on the host. And then I just need to go in here and basically pick which cameras I want to shade. Let's say I want to shade uh, not the SSM 500, but I want to shade the uh, Atom 1, Atom 1 4K, the Atom 1 Mini Zoom. And that's it. So that is uh, three cameras out of the selection. So let's go over to discovering panels again. So I see what we have on the network. And I have this guy, RCP Mini Pro. So I'll just pick that. And uh, for this one, I want to shade the SM1, SSM500. I'm holding down shift when I'm adding cameras. That allows me to add multiple cameras uh, quickly. So um, that's it. With an SSM500, you can have a before lens set on your camera. And in that case, we need a different profile for iris configuration that otherwise... Uh, let me see, we have uh, SSM500 on this one. So this is what we call iris channel. Iris channel is like a configuration specifically for how the lens is working on the camera. So if it had been a before lens control, we would choose this one up here, but today we'll just do this one because that will work with the internal um, lens control parameters of your camera. And the mini zoom should also have this one. Okay, so I'll just pick this one. And this is for the RCP mini. And you can see now I am currently selected on the SSM500 and I can control the lens on that, move over to Atom 1 Mini, and then you control the lens of that. And we also see now we are having distance continu continuity control on the joystick here. So regardless of what we do, it's going to pick up the iris value from where we left. And uh, that's super great. All right, so, uh, and in the middle, by the way, we have this one, no lens control for that. Let's check out the RCP Pro because that would have the same. On this one, we would have Atom 1 4K and Atom 1 Mini Zoom. Those two cameras need iris control. So we'll just add those configurations right here. And there we go. Uh, I'm just checking real quick. And let's just try to, see. we have the first one, we have the second one, and we have the third camera here lens control for those as well. Now, there's one thing that um, I was missing when I was setting these up, and that is actually focus. And I think our configurations do not really have um, focus anywhere. I couldn't find it. So, but um, in this case, it's a good thing because that allows me to show you how you can actually add focus to cameras and give you a little bit of an idea about how you can customize. Because we have uh, done set up in the home screen, which is adding cameras and um, uh, setting up uh, a IP addresses and so on. But if we go into configuration, it is um, actually possible to go beyond that. So if you uh, click any of these, you see this is, um, yeah, I'm sorry for the arrangement. But basically, this is what we call a canvas that has our different controllers available. And it, I can basically now choose between whether I want to focus on the RCP mini configuration or the RCP uh, configuration over here. I want to focus on the RCP configuration. And it's a, it's an experience that can somehow actually work between the the um, uh, device itself and the UI here. So, um, so the first thing is choosing your configuration. I'll just pick RCP. And then here you can either choose what is called a user section. And if you do that, you can click any of these and choose an action and put on top of that. But in this case, we want to choose Streamship camera adjustments because we essentially, after changing what goes into the displays and these two encoder knobs over here in terms of focus control. So that that's what I'm intending to do. And um, and you can, but but you can see if I change the menu, it is actually also moving the pages around over here. You see that. So I'm just picking filter because it's here where I have two empty encoders. Now, on the first one, I want to add focus control. I can, um, and if I want to have this in a generic way that picks up which camera I'm on, I should basically group by device call. So if I do that dream chip camera, pick focus, then it is going to insert focus here. And the thing that happens behind the scenes is that the parameter it inserts uses the device index, which is another term for device ID. Device ID, we talked about it before, out in the home screen. Every one of these has device ID 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and these are being used inside the camera selector 
device ID 234, and the same would be true for the RCP mini. So back here, that variable called device index is holding the, the pointer to the device we are talking to from the DreamShip camera device core. <clears throat> so that's great. Let's go over here. Um, now I just picked something, but I, actually I did not intend to put focus position a second time uh, because it's not available as a, um, yeah. <clears throat> what I intended to do was, because there's something called fine focus and I want to enable disable that. And I'll confirm this guy. Now we have fine focus added by picking the right parameter. And um, I want to try it, right? So I can now turn this encoder up and you'll see fine focus enabled, disabled. Fine focus enabled basically means that this parameter goes above a hundred. It goes to like 1000. But if I disable it, it goes into a range from 100 down to, to one, basically. So what I'm doing right now on the Atom 1 Mini Zoom is adjusting the focus of this uh, device, all right? So, um, and I should be able to do at least a little bit better than what you see right now. But um, there's something about this camera that I'm not super happy with. It's like it's, it's uh, I probably, I just miss, it's the back focus. Okay, we need an excuse and back focus is the excuse today. Let's move on to the, um, to this one that has focus control as well. So here we can see focus position of certain, and I can hear the lens gear working now. And these are the like, okay, I'll do smaller steps for you. And now I'm pulling the iris handle as well. So you can see these lens gears are controlled by the RCP. I think we have covered an insane amount of information today. You have seen cool new Skahoy product, the RCP Mini. You have seen how you can augment your or extend your configuration by custom changes, adding focus position in a place where we, we could basically. And you'll see that if I navigate the menu, it is still going to be right there. It was available across different devices because we were clever enough to use a, a device index by grouping by device call when we assigned the actions and so on. So, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, don't want to give you a nightmare with the configuration tree. That's for a different day. And it would also require more chilies in the video. All right. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope this was really helpful. On our wiki page for DreamChip, this looks like this. There's a lot of information about how to cable your setup, how to test the configuration and all these wonderful things. It's something that you might have to do in that initial phase. Also remember that we have a lock in here, which will help you. Uh, it might look a little bit scary. It's not every warning or error that is actually a problem. But when you are in the configuration phase of your cameras, then it can be helpful if there's something that it, it won't connect. Or what, what do I know? I mean, there are many reasons why. So that will help you with that as well. All right. Thank you. And um, subscribe to our channel, please. Follow us on social media. Great place to stay tuned on Skahoy News. And I'll see you in a different video.